And welcome back, everyone, to The Angry Chicken, the podcast all about Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. I'm Garrett Weinzerl, and I'm sitting here with just Willie Dills today uh, because we're doing something a bit out of the ordinary because uh, we got a huge drop of news. Of course, Dills, as always, the day after mm -hmm. we record an episode. Yep. Um, Team 5, always with the timing. Always with very, the timing. Very, very good with the timing. Always with the timing, never with the warning. <laughs> no. Never with the warning. But, you know, look, we cover the Hearthstone news. People who cover the news, they don't know when the news is going to happen. It just happens. Yeah, it just happens. So you got to be at, you got to be ready at a moment's notice to talk about the force of nature change, you know? Absolutely. At any moment. Absolutely. So, um and 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 again, got you know, it sounds like shameless plugging, but it's true thanks to the patrons because we're working from home now doing like our own thing and we get to do this kind of crap when it actually comes together so yeah thank actually, you guys. this this is directly because of patrons so <laughs> not because have been able to just guys. suddenly go hey let's do a show yeah yeah not saying this will always happen so no. don't yeah. don't get your don't get your hopes too far up but uh thank you guys because sometimes stuff like this can happen so if you like the show and you want to keep seeing stuff like this go support us at patreon.com slash tac well let's get into it dills uh team five posted today uh a new blog uh, called Keeping Hearthstone Fresh, and basically what this is, even though they didn't bill it that way, is the nerf list for the basic and classic cards uh, that are, well, getting nerfed. Because, yep. as we now found out, Old Gods is dropping next week, which means we're getting Standard next week, which means Go Goblins vs. Gnomes, gone. Naxxramas, gone in Standard. But basic and classic cards are sticking around, but some of them are not going to look like you what you remember them looking like and let's get into it with the first thing which is moving in the druid cards we're going to talk about the ancient of lore change right off the bat so uh ancient of lore uh has stayed the same same mana cost same attack same health wait wait uh, wait, wait before before you start okay can we just real quick just your overall impression looking at the whole list did you feel good this morning when you saw this pretty good yeah Okay. Overall, right. overall. I think we're starting from the same place then. Pretty good uh, from yeah. these changes when I went through it. A couple of them, I went, "Oh, that seems a bit harsh." Yeah, but, um, you, but I think you have to think. You have to think a little bit deeper on these ones. And when you read their explanations, like every single thing here made a lot of sense to me. And I, you know, I can't wait to like actually get a chance to talk about these. But just looking at the list. After I was done reading through everything, it was like, "Oh man, I cannot wait to play Hearthstone in a week." I just can't wait. It's just going to be the game. I think is going to be in such a better state. I I agree. I agree. Well, let's start with Ancient of Lore. Um, it uh, basically, really, the only thing that changed is it now only draws one card if you choose mm -hmm. to draw cards. So no more draw two cards. Draw one card. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, some of these changes look very heavy-handed when you just kind of take them in a vacuum and you don't think about why the card is in the state that it currently is in and why it's a problem. If you just look at that card and you say, man, that doesn't seem like that's worth seven mana anymore. The fact is that the, the version of it that we've always been playing with is so much better than everything else that you never build a Druid deck without it. And that is the problem, right? And that's kind of what we've been talking about week in and week out on the TAC Primes, mm -hmm. looking at the new cards that are being revealed from old gods. And we're, we're noted that Jocelyn keeps using this term, and I love it. It's reverse power creep. Yeah, uh, things are are being reined in. Things are less powerful. And it's just because, like you said, there's these car cards like Ancient of Lore that are just so powerful that we compare every other card at that mana cost to it. Yeah, um, and there's no reason to play anything at seven cost in Druid unless it's Doctor Boom or Ancient of War, and those cards are also incredibly powerful for their mana cost as well. So now you're going to see a lot more Ancient of War, a lot less Ancient of Lore, and you're going to see more choices yeah. being made. You're going to see more more Druids deciding what goes at 7 rather than just auto-put in two of these and then move on. Uh, and that that is, I think, a really positive change. I think Druid's problem right now isn't really that it's overpowered as a class. I mean, it's a very good class. We know that. The yeah. problem is that there's only one way to play it that's really good, and all the other ways, you're just kind of why should I play this class at all if I'm not playing this way? So, uh, you know, think like certain, certainly you can play the ramp druid that plays all the big taunts and stuff like that. And I, I know some people have been playing that lately. So it's not like there's just no other way, but that's only a meta choice that you see very, you know, very rarely that people actually use that version of it. Outside of that, every time you see a druid, you basically know what you're seeing a mid range combo druid. So now we're going to see some variety, which is really nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. So overall, you happy with this change? I mean, uh, it's one of the yeah. most, I, one of the more minor changes I think we're going to take a look at here. It's to me, this, this just means that this card's pro, like, this isn't going to be the draw engine anymore for druids. And they're going to play other, like some other classes have had to find ways to draw. And druid just never cared about all that because they just had this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they just didn't give a crap, you know? So, yeah, I think, I think this, is, this is totally fine. It's, it's still a card that's okay. It's probably not going to go in unless there's not better options. Now you might just have to play. Like, now you'll see Azure Drakes more. You'll see people, uh, you know, using Wrath to cycle more. You'll see maybe even things like Acolyte of Pain in Druid, some other way to draw cards, you know. Um, and right now, like, they just had this, and they just didn't care. They didn't have to put in draw. Because once you got to seven, you just fill your hand back up, you know. So. Yeah. So, uh, good question, I think, from the chat room. Maybe one will ask about most of these cards, except the ones that are um, basic. Uh, are you going to dust this when the refund hits? Uh, no, unless I have extras. Um, I still just want to have all the cards, you know. Mm. So Fair enough. Good point. Yeah. But if it, you... I am keeping extras of every classic card at this moment because, uh, you know, th like, we knew these changes were coming. So I think I actually have a gold Force of Nature, which we're about to get to, which I'd Ooh. definitely be dusting that. Nice. Well, let's, let's get to it. Let's take a look at Force of Nature. So Force of Nature is changing uh, to... Uh, it's going to be one less mana, so it's going mm -hmm. from six to five. Uh, but now it just reads, summon three, two, two, Treants. So two big things here. Treants no longer have charge, yep, which is a huge thing. But they also no longer die at the end of the turn, so yep. you get three permanent two twos. Yeah, so you get six six worth of body for five mana, spread across three minions. Spread across three minions seems balanced. <laughs> this seems very balanced it, to me. It's a very balanced card. Right? It, it's yeah. hard. It's hard. It, you really have to like. All right, pretend. The old version didn't exist. If I was looking at this card sure. yeah. by itself, what would I say about Force of Nature? And, uh, you know, three two twos for five mana? It's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, and the, the problem with the Force of Nature and Savage Roar, and we talked about this on the show, and I, I did predict that it was Force of Nature that would be changed. And the reason that, it, that I predicted that is because if you look at Hearthstone right now, Bloodlust isn't some oppressive card in the game, right? And Bloodlust is arguably more powerful than Savage Roar on its own. Savage Roar is very versatile and is a really cool tool for druids to have, and it also enables a style of druid play, which is the token druid, which we used to see and kind of went away because people figured out it's better just to play strong minions that are hard to remove, and then at some point you have Force of Nature Savage Roar and it's enough damage. Uh, before, people were just trying to flood the board with all of these little one ones and then hope to you know, Savage Roar at some point. That will be back now because that will actually be one of the ways to win. And that's not oppressive. That is not a class and, and a deck that is just like you, you can't play against it in any other style than just remove everything all the time. Uh, you, you can actually have some counterplay. So the force of nature to me was the problem. I don't think the Savage Roar ever was. And now you know, Savage Roar is, is pretty cool some points in the game to use it as a board clearing mechanism, right? To yeah. help you get better trades. So. I'm glad that that's not going away. I'm glad it's this. Yeah. That said, Force of Nature sometimes was used as a last-ditch effort to board clear as well, and that sure. is no longer an option with this card whatsoever. No, no. Uh, so, you know, druids are going to have to get a little bit more creative when it comes to removing boards and stuff. I'm sorry. There's people, like, doing yard work outside right now. <laughs> I don't know how much of that you're picking up. Not a ton. It's not that bad. Okay, good. No. No, it's totally fine. Okay, good. <laughs> It seems super loud to me right now. It, it's it's minor, so <laughs> okay. All Anyways, right. uh, cool. Any any final thoughts on on Force of Nature? I, I'm I'm excited for the same reason you're excited. I'm excited to see Token Druid hopefully come back because that was mm -hmm. a, a a type of Druid that I really enjoyed. Yeah, um, and and I think you know Savage Drawer on its own isn't going to be that crazy. So you know I'm not, I'm not going to be too concerned, but I'm still going to think about it and I. You know, I think Druids should have some explosiveness, some ways to finish. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of classes in Hearthstone that have burst potential, and I don't think that needs to necessarily be taken away from Druid, but maybe in this specific way it should be. So, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the next one. Keeper of the Grove getting a change, which I was kind of surprised to see Keeper of the Grove up on the chopping block. Uh, yeah, because you don't look at Keeper of the Grove and think that it's an OP card, but 
again, the reason for this change is just that it's in every single Druid deck, right? Yeah. So it's uh, the change is for those listening and not watching. It's uh, it's it's going down to two health. That's the only thing that's changing. It's still four mana. It still has two attack. It still has the choose one deal two damage or silence a minion. But now it only has two health. So you're paying four mana for a two two, but uh, it has it still has the same choose one options. Yeah, and and you know it's it's fine. This probably will now not be played as much. But I think they're just trying to t to make silence something that has a penalty attached to it, and the two four body for four that then also did the silencing effect just didn't seem like enough of a penalty, I think. And, I mean, of course, the two damage was a pretty good option, too. So this is a card that's probably not going to see much play anymore, and I think that's kind of the point, is that if you want to put it in, if you want to have this versatility, you actually now have to think about it, make a decision, is this worth it for my deck? Whereas before, it was just an auto-include. Yeah. So Do you, you think know. it would have been an auto-include, though, with just one less health? I think they could have made it a 2-3. Absolutely. They're, they're, you could definitely make an argument that 2-2 two, two is a little bit too much. But, you know, they have the statistics on how many Druid decks are running it. And if the deck... I, I like this better than making it a 6-cost 2-2 two, two, or something crazy like what they used to do when you think of things like Starving Buzzard, right? Yeah. Uh, just nerf one little bit of it, one, one piece of it, and that's fine. And so they just took away some of the health. But yeah, 2-3 would have been fine too, I think, for sure. Yeah. So, I don't know. This one for me, because I, I don't keep every single card in the game like Dills, I'm considering dusting Keeper of the Grove and getting a little extra dust and making yeah. some new shiny cards. The thing is, it's so at 2-3, it's probably equal power level to Spellbreaker um, because of the option of being able to do damage or silence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Spellbreaker is a 4-3 that only silences, but you get an, a better body now. So, you know, I would like to see class cards be slightly more powerful than uh, neutral cards in most cases. But with Druid, because of the, how much versatility they have, you have to be a little bit overcautious, I think, with balancing. So I, I'm okay with it. I, I Again, it's like I totally think 2-3 would have been maybe better, but I'm, just, I'm fine with the game being changed right now. Like Things are changing. No longer is it going to be, okay, I'm making a Druid deck. Okay, put in Ancient Allure, put in Force Savage, put in Keeper. Okay, now what else do I do? You know, now there's going to be some thought behind how you build your deck, and you're going to see differences in Druid types. So, yeah, good. Yep, absolutely. And and while we're on the subject of just the, their change in approach, I think, to, to Silence Balance overall, Spellbreaker excluded, but I don't think spell, Spellbreaker was ever an issue. Um, no. Let's talk about Iron Beak Owl, because Iron Beak Owl is getting a change as well. Iron Beak Owl is uh, staying the same, but it's going to cost you one more mana. So you're going to have to spend three mana to cast Iron Beak Owl and uh, get your Silence Beast out on the board there. Yep. I mean, this is fine, too, because I, the, the problem with Iron Beak Owl is it was just too cheap. So it allowed you to do the Silence and then do a bunch of other stuff in the same turns, which was oftentimes kill them, kill the opponent, you know? Um, so now you're going to pay one more mana to do it. You're going to get a weak body. It's again, you're going to have to make a choice. So, um, yeah, I think this is also fine. It, this isn't, this isn't going way too far. This isn't going overboard. This isn't a problem at all. Silence needs to be a choice that you make in a deck, right? And a counter choice to a meta that has a lot of really, really difficult to deal with minions without silence. But you want to pay a penalty when you're doing something as powerful as silencing a card. So Yeah, and Jamron brings fine. up a good point, too. Uh, can't get this off of Scarab anymore. Well, you can get it off of Scarab now. Oh, you can get it off of Scarab now. Sorry. You couldn't before. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It won't drop out of Pilot Shredders anymore. But yeah, but you can get it off oh, of that's a, Yeah, that's a good point. So in Wild, you won't be seeing it in Pilot, off of Piloted Shredders. Mm -hmm. But you, in Standard, you will be seeing it off of Scarab. So that makes Scarab a better card, in theory. Yeah. I mean, Scarab now gives you... Essentially, like, well, no, no longer big game hunters, but, you know, it gives you, like, some cool countering cards, you know? Like, I remember the first time I was playing against the Warlock, and I got the friggin' Silent Demon card off of Scarab. I was like, whoa! Now this card makes sense, because it's good here, and I get to pick it off of a Scarab. It was really, you know... I think that was actually one of the games we were playing together when I was showing you the uh, Explorer deck. Oh, but, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I do vaguely, but, vaguely remember that. Yeah, so it's, you know, these, these kind of changes are funny because you don't think about stuff like that. Like, when you change the mana cost, there's so many now, like, counter or, uh, you know, cards that, that rely on things like drawing a, a specific cost card and stuff. 
And now you've also got that mage card. This will be one of the cards now uh, that will come off that mage card, the six mana five five. Yep. So you'll get owls sometimes. They won't get their silence, but. Yeah. So let's take a look at Big Game Hunter. It happened, Dills. <laughs> Big Game one, Hunter yeah. is getting changed. But not not all that much. Just an increase in cost. So Big Game Hunter is still a 4 2, still destroys a minion with an attack of seven or more, but it's going to cost you two more mana. Five mana now to cast Big Game Hunter. Dills, does this does this satiate the inner BGH hater that I know you are? <laughs> uh yeah, I so I'm not necessarily like a hater of BGH. I think BGH needs to exist in the game. And I heard all these crazy ideas of what it should do. It should only kill beasts. It should only kill things. Uh, it should only kill giants. Like it should. Like it was just all these like weird ideas for what it should do. Um, I was always kind of of the idea that it should just be I don't know a four mana three two or something like that. So this is about as close as it was to what I wanted, uh, which is just make it a penalty to play a card in your deck that does something this powerful. Make it cost a lot for what it does. And uh, this, this is totally that. Because if, if you think about it, the problem that BGH was in the game for me was it was just too big of a swing, right? You spent three mana to kill their Ragnaros that they spent eight mana on. And you played a 4-2 at the same time. Like, yep. That's crazy. Now you have to spend five mana to do it. And that's fine. So at five mana, the tempo swing is not as big. It's not just, oh my god, he BGH'd my big card, I lose now. Um, it's just going to change the whole dynamic of, of Big Game Hunter. You're going to have to decide whether you put Big Game Hunter in your deck, not just, okay, I build my deck, always put in one BGH. Like That's kind of where everything was. you know. So many decks just For a very long one time. BGH, yeah, it, I feel like it's been on the downturn a bit as of late. Sure. But, um, yeah, no, I think I, I'm surprised how much I like this change because when I yeah. like, very first looked at it, I'm like, well, it's kind of, it's still totally there. Like this is still a card I think that could see play in certain metas. If we ever get tournaments with sideboards, this is absolutely a sideboard card. Um, well, this, this is going to still be in the meta. I think, I think a lot of decks are still going to run one of, but this is going to encourage people to start running those cards. They weren't running because BGH existed, right? Right. Because again. getting BGH on your card isn't going to mean you lose the game anymore. So yeah. people are going to now start running all these bigger cards. And, you know, we've got things like Cthune. If this card doesn't exist in this form, if they changed it to only giants or only beasts or whatever the hell, you know, it was, uh, giant cards and buffing cards and making them all huge and stuff would be oppressive in this game instead of people are, like complaining about aggro and they're getting run over they would complain about how this giant thing i can't get rid of just keeps smashing me in the face um and that's not the hearthstone i want i want the hearthstone where there's counterplay back and forth the board states constantly in flux not oh man he played a fell reaver what do i do i can't do anything <laughs> it's just gonna hit my face over and over yeah, um, yeah. so this this is really really positive i think I'm 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 happy about it, 100. percent So yeah, and th this was the card that like, everyone was super concerned. What's going to happen here with Big Game Hunter? This has to be changed. I'm I'm very curious to see what Brian Kibler is going to say about this because I know he's the one who initially wrote the article, Big Big Fun Hunter or whatever it was, talking about how this card was making you not able to play the big fun cards. And I think you want to be able to play the big fun cards, but you also want to not have those just take over games. Right, right absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's all about that cost, right? Like, you're spending a lot of mana now to deal with a big threat, and you should spend a you lot should. of mana to deal with a big <laughs> yeah. threat. Yeah, um, yeah okay, you, can, you, know, you still have removal spells like Hex, where you're casting a small amount of mana to get rid of something, but you're not getting a 4-2 when you're doing that. Exactly. So, I... Um, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, so. and I, I'm so happy that when I, as we go through all these changes, we're not getting just the they're just smashing the card into the ground. It's you know? we're not getting War Song Commander for the no. most part. Like, I what hated happened? those changes because they were just oh that card you know yeah we're just making that card just that, as if it didn't exist anymore. N these are all changes that say okay now this card is much more of a decision. Do you want to play this card? Think about it. Now, why do you want to play this? Is this still worth five mana to you? And I think in most cases, yes, it will be worth five mana, but you're going to have to now think about it. There's yep. going to be other options. So, And you're also going to think about what other threats they may have in their deck. Like, is this the big game hunter target? That's true. Or you do know, I... there's many times where, it, you know, the tempo BGH play 
you're not going to see the tempo BGH play anymore because now it's going to be like, if I'm going to put five men into this, I'm not just going to drop a, a four, two on the board. That yeah. is just not worth it. Yep. And then if, you know, like the tempo BGH play was fine before because, you know, it was for three men and like it filled out turns sometimes, you know, and just gave you one more, one more thing to, to do in that turn. And that's why it was fine here. It's like, it'll take up your whole turn. So. Well, let's move on then and talk about the next change, Hunter's Mark, the only Hunter card getting changed. It now costs one mana instead of zero. Still does the same thing, still changes uh, your tar the, the, the target minion's health to one, but now you're going to actually have to spend mana to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Hunter's Mark wasn't a card that I think everyone was super concerned with, but um, this is fine. At one mana, it's still fine. <laughs> it does what it does. It allows you to kill a big card, and yeah, I don't see any problem here. I don't I, think we needed this, but I guess, you know, I'm statistics ha said otherwise. I'm happy about it. Hunter's Mark can, can definitely be a, a, a super feel-bad card at times. Sure. Because um, you can literally always cast it, no matter what is happening, Well, I, unless things get weird with Lothab. But, yeah. Um, which this is the lock and load Hunter about. nerf we've all been waiting for, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think this one, it's it's fine. You, 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 you can't always cast it now. You're going to have to actually, okay, I can't just deploy my whole hand and still play Hunter's Mark. Yeah. I, so. The thing is, though, I think that there's there's a certain level, and again, it's like people might look at this and go like, why? But Blizzard is looking at the future and looking at cards that they've maybe wanted to create that they cannot create because there's just cards like this in the game, right? And they feel, you know, to them... Uh, they feel like this card is limiting design space essentially because it's too efficient and zero cost cards can potentially be really scary down the line. Right. Um, and we've talked about this on the show, I think a few times that just at a certain point, any card that's really cheap can become just crazy OP when they have, when they have certain things get added to the game. Yeah. So, really any type of combo thing, any type yeah. of card that is benefited by a certain other type of card being played. So cheap spells are scary because of cards like flame waker and mm -hmm. cheap minions are scary because of cards like Knife Juggler. Yeah. So Yeah. Um, so it's you know, it's like we we're, we're looking at these changes just with the knowledge that we have, right? Which is seventy cards or so from the new set, these changes and the existing cards. That's all we know. We don't know the cards that Blizzard has put on the table and then said, We can't make this. Hunter's mark is zero. And this is going to go way too well with that. You know, so I want everyone to like keep that in mind. Like some of these changes might look weird because we're used to the current meta, and this card isn't doing anything crazy in the current meta, really, right? Yeah. But the, we don't know what is coming down the line. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm assuming they're thinking long game. Now they didn't say it. This was the card they were probably the, the least talkative about in their remarks. They just said, "Hey, it's too efficient." And I would argue that just about every change here is because the card is too efficient. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I think that's fine. I mean, if you're going to change, if you're going to make big game hunter cost more, I think Hunter's Mark for me rolls. It falls into the same line of cards. Like it has a very similar effect. It deals with a big threat on the board. Yeah. Um. So I think you should pay something for that. I, more than just a card in like in your deck. So. No, I I agree, I agree a hundred percent. And and the next card we're going to talk about, I think, is another one that's the design space is the reason, not. Yeah, this, this is probably, <laughs> again, like this This came out, what, a little over an hour ago when we're talking mm -hmm. about this. This is our gut reactions, folks, that you're getting. Um, but just from what I've seen on Twitter and from our chat room right now, the Blade Flurry change, I think, is the, the most divisive uh, change in here. It's the one I think most people are actually upset, upset with. Right. If there's any change in here that people aren't happy with, it's probably this one. Yeah, so Blade and Flurry... Blade Flurry has changed quite a bit. So it used to cost two mana and now costs four mana. So the cost of it is being doubled. Mm -hmm. um, and it no longer deals damage to the enemy hero. It now reads destroy your weapon and deal its damage to all enemy minions, not all enemies. So this the, the power level of Blade Flurry just dropped. Just It fell through the floor. <laughs> It did um, in a huge way, and the reasoning here that I see is not because Blade Flurry in its current incarnation is too powerful, but remember when Poison Blade came out and we all scratched our heads? Yeah. We're like, wh why is this card being made? Well, they probably wanted to make really cool, powerful rogue weapons, 
But they can't when Blade Flurry is two mana and so good. Um, they just can't. Like, you know, Assassin's Blade is fine where it's at because it costs a lot and has four charges, so you can't use your hero power every turn. So Blade Flurry, uh, this, this was a card limiting design space, and that's really what it was. So mm-hmm. I think, honestly, the, the reasoning for this is rogues should have cool weapons, lots of daggers and buffing cards for those daggers. But if this card is only two mana and it's burst potential, they can't really do those because they're all way too good. They, they go to make you know a 5-2 rogue weapon, and it's like, we can't give them this because then they just OTK you, you know, and that's, that's the problem there. So then suddenly they're like, okay, every rogue weapon has to be like a 1-3 or a 1-4 for 4. four that gets, you know what I mean? They end up with po- Poison Blade. Right. And I really think that's what happened here is that they're all just sitting around trying to figure out how to, you know, they, they keep giving warriors new weapons and they can't give rogues new weapons because Blade Flurry is just insane if you do. So, yeah, it, 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 is, it is such an in, insanely strong card. Yeah. Um, that my my concern though, it's like I, every uh, really good points you brought up, and and I agree with you one hundred percent. My concern is is that I'm gonna kind of hold judgment on what I think of the Blade Flurry change until we see the rest of the old gods cards. Because mm-hmm. um, what I'm hoping is that yeah. Rogue gets a really cool, really strong new weapon that is going to see standard play. Uh, if it doesn't, I feel like this change is probably coming a little too soon because I don't know what Rogues are going to do otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I, I, right now I'm not sure exactly what direction they're pushing rogues into, but I think it's mostly they're pushing them towards kind of going back into that spell-based rogue play, because uh, we you know we have seen a lot of stuff recently, like the you know death rattle give you a coin and all that kind of stuff has brought back auctioneer. So miracle is still I think a, a really powerful archetype, but they are going to need more ways to actually finish you with damage or stronger minions that can actually attack. Because right now, the rogue minions don't often get to do much damage. So, um, you know, I guess Raptor Rogue is maybe what they're pushing us towards. So that's our minion-based rogue. And then Auctioneer with all these spells, you know, the new rogue legendary. It's going to give us two extra spells, right? That may be what it's going towards, too. But we still haven't seen, like, I, actually, I don't even know how many of the rogue cards have we seen. It's not that many, right? Mm-hmm. No. I'm going to pull it up right now. I, would pull but it I don't up, think but... it's that many of them, so... <laughs> It's you know to me it's like this is this is one I see why I get the point but I also get why people are pissed because uh, right now what it looks like is rogue is dead right that's what it looks like right now because everyone's just thinking in terms of current rogue they're, they're they're stuck inside that box right now and it's hard to get out of that box well I mean part and that's on Blizzard I mean we yeah. haven't we haven't seen the one two three four five rogue cards still to come. Right, and the, um, but again, I mean that's kind of on them, and and the the order in which they decide to release information. Yeah. Um. So, we're we're reacting to this with as much information as we have, mm-hmm. and 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 my gut reaction is, oh man, this is unnecessary. <laughs> sure, sure, but but again, like I, you know, you read through it and you say, yeah, okay, I get it because um, there's just too much burst, and weapons can't really be invented. Because of this burst potential, uh, you know. Yeah. So it's and and I'm looking at the cards that that Rogue is getting. So thing from uh, sorry, whoops, Undercity Huckster is a card that's going to give you value essentially. Like you play a two two for two, and then you get a card. So card advantage card, value card, Shadow Caster, value card. Um, go, copy a one one or copy a friendly minion, make a one one copy in your hand that costs one. So you're going to be copying like these really kind of value oriented cards that are and then Zeril value card. I think they're trying to push Rogue into more of a control archetype rather than like a, a burst you out combo archetype. So, yeah. and that doesn't seem weird to me. That seems fine. I think Rogue would do well there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm mostly in your camp. Like I said, I'm. I'm just playing a bit of devil's advocate. I. Th- I think right now it's just keep calm, everyone. Let's see. Yeah. what happens and and then feel free to get nuts like if the other six car- rogue cards are released and they're just like steaming piles yeah, yeah feel free to get loud if you're a rogue player but it, this 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 is true though that what they said in this is that if you think about all the aoe that hits minions and face none of it does that much damage right no so no you got consecrate uh, you got holy nova and hellfire and Hellfire, yeah. And Hellfire, Hellfire has, hits yourself hits too. Hits yourself, so, which yeah. and your own minion. Hellfire has a, yeah. a huge drawback. Yeah. 
But think uh, about when you blade flurried with Malagos on board, and you did not only did you do you know twelve damage to all the minions, you also did it to their face, right? Yep. It just enabled so much crazy burst already, and that's with the current set of weapons. What about the weapons that you think of? You're like, oh, you know, what would be a cool card is this card, and you're like, oh, we can't do that. Because then they Malagos and Blade Flurry, you know, it's, and they already have prep too. You know, it's just, it's, there's so much stuff you can't do with a card like this in its current form. So, yeah, I'm fine. I am taking a second to blow a kiss to my wife, <laughs> who I am not eating lunch with so I could do this. Yeah. <laughs> See, they, they could have done, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate with, advocate with you. They could have made this three mana, same effect. I think it's totally fine. Does what it's, does what it's intended yeah, to do. Yeah, no, here. it, it, I, I, the, the, this, I look at this, um, like I'm looking at uh, Keeper of the Grove. It's like, okay, I like it overall. I think you maybe went a hair too far. But again, sure. again I'm, I think everyone right now, I think the game is keep calm, you know, just assume the best, and let's wait until we see the rest of the set. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, anyways, let's, uh, let's move on and talk about Knife Juggler, who we, we were pretty sure was going to get a change. Uh, this, I know. This is a card that is, I know, near and dear to your heart, Dills. Mm-hmm. As, uh, poor, poor Juggalo. Poor Juggalo. He's going down. He's going down. So Knife Juggler staying the same except for its attack value. Uh, he's going down to two attacks. So it's a 2-2 two, two for two that uh, with the exact same, I think, still very strong effect. Um, yeah, I, I think... still combos really well with a lot of stuff, you know, Unleash the Hounds and all that. Uh, but now it's just going to be a little bit less scary to deal with as far as like an aggro deck is concerned because it on itself doesn't just do three damage, you know? So I think this is fine. Um, as a priest player, this makes me so happy. It's like, oh, sweet. If they miss their juggles, he doesn't get to also just value kill my Northshire cleric. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, th- this is going to be a card that you have to now play with other minions to make it good. It's not just drop it on turn two as a, as a three two. Also, the fact that now my two threes can kill it for free it's really really cool, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I get to kill it and keep my minion alive. That this is now that's a big penalty for playing a card as good as Knife Juggler. That's and the thing, right? Before there was Knife really, Juggler had no penalty. Yeah, no there, penalty. There, there was no there were no minions that you got to value trade with Knife Juggler that weren't overcosted to do so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So a card with this powerful of an effect should have a penalty somewhere, and that's I think the point uh, that a lot of people made. And this is basically just. Handles all that right away. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, Ariok in the chat room goes, "Ooh, Cabal Meat," and you're damn right. <laughs> yeah, you're that's da- true. Th- yeah. Th- my priest deck is just it's throwing a little party right now. It's just like, yeah, yeah. Northshire lives, and I get to steal it. <laughs> Love it. You know, it's funny. If you Cabal it, do you get a juggle? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think so because it's I mean, not being summoned. I don't know if Cabal counts as summoning a minion. No, I don't. I don't do believe it. it does. I don't because it's already out there. It's already been summoned. You're not, just, yeah, you're not resummoning You're just relocating you're just it. it. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It's we'll just see. moving to the other side of the tracks. Science! Science! <laughs> we'll have to do some. Let's look at Lepernome. You know that party I promised everyone? Well, I guess we'll have to have it a dream hack. Uh, Lepernome got nerfed! Woo! It's a 1-1 now. That's the only thing that changed. It's attack value, much like Lepernome, went down by 1. So instead of being a 2-1 one for 1, it's a 1-1 one one for 1. Death Rattle stays the same. Still, still deals 2 damage to the enemy hero. I yep. think this is a really good change. Yeah, it's perfect because now it's still an aggro card, still yep. going to get played, I think, just because it's one mana do two damage and maybe maybe more. Dude, in wild, but, I am building my Hobgoblin deck like you can't, you, you can't imagine, dude. You cannot <laughs> you imagine how, how awesome my Hobgoblin deck is going to be yeah. in wild. Now it gets Divine Shield, too, or whatever, right? So you can play it in that deck. I don't know. You can do all the stuff. You can, do, you get, you can play Hobgoblin, Divine Shield, the Paladin yeah. Cancer deck. There you go. Paladin Hobgoblin deck coming soon to a wild yeah. near you. Yeah, I mean th- this is fine. It's it's it, again, you need to pay a penalty for what it does as a one drop and this is a penalty, so all yep. good. Yep. Uh, I think it'll still get played in aggro decks because aggro decks want to play something every turn. Plus, you know, like think about it, a hunter will play this and then Glaive Zuka or whatever in wild. Like I know Glaive Zuka is going away in standard, but I think, you know, people I think a lot of people are still going to be playing wild. There's still going to be ways to do stuff to this on turn two. You'll be able to play this on turn one and then buff it on turn two with an abusive or something like that and still do something. So it'll yeah. still be played. Yeah. I'm happy about it. Also called it. Well, not this change, but I knew it was getting nerfed. <laughs> but no that, that it would be nerfed. Yeah, I had a feeling it would be too, just because it, it is. Uh, 
It's one of those cards that's just like so damn scary. It's like they play it on turn one. You're like, oh man, I'm gonna be at eight on turn four, aren't I? You know, and now it's gonna be like, okay, cool, we can deal with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about another. I, I think kind of confusing change. Arcane Golem. Uh, Arcane Golem no longer has charge. Mm-hmm. Uh, still has the battle cry of giving your opponent a mana crystal, and it's had its health buffed by two. So it, yeah. it's it's now a four four for three with the drawback of giving your opponent a, uh, a mana crystal when you when you play Arcane Golem. Yep, this is basically trying to just remove these crazy charge effects. Yeah, without penalties, and the, they're. As much as yes, okay, the the battle cry of giving your opponent the mana crystal looks like a penalty. It actually never was. Like it, it just wasn't. Not when you were getting four damage in. Yeah, exactly. Because the decks that played this, you either comboed it, so you'd play this and like double power faceless or something like that, or you'd play it in hunter, where you just don't give a crap how much mana the other guy has because <laughs> you're just doing damage. Because you're probably gonna win by turn seven. Yeah, and, and think about you know Leroy was already nerfed right down to five. Still totally a viable card, but now much in a much better place. Because yeah, of that. and we're seeing Leroy play today. That's a really good example of a card that was extremely strong, was nerfed, and is still seeing play. Sylvanas, I think, is another one, although not a charge sure. minion, so it doesn't really apply here. But Yeah, um, but you know, when that card got changed, it was fair, and it needed the change, right? And I think this card was just kind of doing some things that Blizzard doesn't want in the game anymore, which is enabling these kind of I-kill-you-out-of-nowhere combos. And I think that's just what they're trying to go away from. Uh, but they still want you to have the option to do it. But you know, Leroy, you can only put one of. It's a legendary. It gives you know. It's a, you definitely can only play it as a finisher. So it's in an okay place. This card was maybe not quite in an okay place because it just made aggro decks so damn scary, and also combo decks so damn scary. So they're just trying to remove that effect. Same thing with the force of nature change. That all these you know charging should be hard. It, it shouldn't just be something that's super simple to do. So. It's it basically this is a bad card now. I you know I totally see that. This is an extremely card boring card, and it's bad. It's just bad. But if it, but it's you know it's better than a three cost card should be. So if you feel like giving the opponent the mana crystal to be able to kill their three four for free is worth it, then I guess. But like I you know in in arena I might pick this card because there's no penalty late game, um, and if I play it on turn three and then I stay ahead the rest of the game, this might be okay. So. Yeah. yeah, I think it's fine. The, it, the the change might be kind of confusing, but again, I think this is one of those uh, soul of the card. We don't want to necessarily take away. It's give the opponent the mana crystal thing, but how can we balance a three mana card that gives a, a, a mana crystal to the opponent? How can we balance that? Make it slightly stronger for its cost, right? Right, right. It, it's it's uh, very similar to what's kind of hap- what happens with overload cards. You're getting a little more yeah. for what you're paying now, but you're, there's a drawback. You're 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 going to pay for it at some point. And in this case, you're not necessarily paying for it out of your own mana, but you're giving you're accelerating your opponent. Yeah. So would you yeah. would you take it in arena just to have a a, a big menu? I, I on think three? so. Um, you know, because you think about like like ogres is what you take in arena. Sometimes you don't often take the one that gives the card to the other guy. The death rattle give a card. Right. Um, but I think this is okay just because late game it's there's no there's no penalty to play a four four. Um and early game sometimes you might be you might be totally okay with the mana crystal thing, depending on what your hand looks like. Yeah. And also the, this will be up against some other rare cards and some rare cards are just totally crap. So Yep. Yeah. It's not gonna be high on my list, but it currently wasn't really high on my list anyway. Arcane Golem wasn't something you're often. Yeah, picking. no one play, like you said, no one played it as a minion. Uh, no. It was this this combo, this this kind of scary end end scenario. You never played it just on three to get a four two with charge. Yeah, exactly. unless you were in a really bad position and you needed four damage removal. But yeah, um, that was you know it wasn't your goal. It wasn't the reason you were putting Arcane Golem in your deck. No, and I think that's what you need to consider <laughs> when you're looking at this change. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's a bad card now, but it's, that happens from time to time. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I think it's, Sometimes I think, the card I think in this uh, particular scenario, I am 100% on board with it. So yes, let's too. talk about Molten Giant, a change I did not see coming at all. Molten Giant what? now costs 25 mana. Well, st- starts at 25 mana instead starts. of 20. Yes. So it's going to be trickier to get this out for zero. Uh, that w- a lot of people had talked about, they thought all the Giants were going to get changed. And... I didn't think all the Giants were going to get changed because really how many of the Giants out there right now were causing problems? Probably only this one. 
probably this is the only giant that was really causing problems. So I mean, I, I think this was objectively the best giant in the game. Yeah, yeah. So this, this I don't think is actually going away. I think people are still going to play Molten Giants in decks that want to take damage and stuff. Like, think about, you know, Echo Mages and stuff will still be able to get those really cheap Giants out because they have Ice Block and they can get really low. Now, uh, with less charging and damage burst potential out there in the game, you can get lower health and still feel okay. Um, so you, it's not so crazy to get down to, to 10 health, right? And at 10 health, you'll play it for 5. At 5 health, you'll play it for 0. Um, but at 10 health, you'll play it for 5. Now, the one thing, though, is you probably won't be able to play this anymore in Handlock that runs Jaraxxus because it's literally unplayable after you play Jaraxxus now. So like, there's just no way to ever get there. You get down to 0 health, and it costs 10, right? So... <laughs> Uh, I can but, finally cast it. I am dead. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, depending depending on what the meta looks like, this card I think still possibly exists. But I think in its current form, there was just it would get so tricky sometimes. You get someone super low, uh, and then all of a sudden double molten Reno, and you're just like, oh my god, you know, <laughs> like okay, I guess I lose. And I think that was the problem that they were kind of looking at. So. It was just it was it was too easy to get your health low, and I yep. think it was just not risky enough for that for what the effect was. And I don't know what you're talking about on handlocks, man. I'm just gonna start slotting Thoris in into my handlock with Jaraxxus and just hoping for the best. <laughs> All right, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. I will get a molten giant out with Jaraxxus. Yeah, the, the thing is, like, I don't think mountain giants were ever were ever like the causing problems. No. Sure, when they played them on four, sometimes it was like, oh crap, you know. But it was the moltens, right? It was the double moltens. So we'll see. We'll see, but I think it's still okay. Yeah, I think this is okay. way, way less. I think usability across the board, but yeah, yes. I think it'll be a niche card in some very specific decks. But this this one's rough. I think Molten Giants yeah. kind of it's going to go away for a while. It's going to jail. Yeah. Now here's here's <laughs> the interesting thought though. Is like, what if they made it twenty two? Would that be weird? It kind of would be. I think. It would look strange, but... <laughs> like, I, it would look weird on the card to me, right? It, it would. It would. Be, I'm it, sure they thought about that. Like, what if we make it 23? That's probably the correct balance point, but that's weird. Yeah. I don't know. It's like when, you, when 10 mana is your max, things being in nice, even, like, like integers of five or I don't know. Like, that stuff. By the way, though, yeah, uh, Ringusu in chat just said it. I was just going to bring this up. Holy Raph buff! <laughs> 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 oh jeez. Yep, I hit you for twenty five now. What's up? Another another time where I'm just like, man, scribe would be so awesome in Hearthstone. If you could plan <laughs> around that. Like if you're actually yeah, like no. I'm gonna scry and see like, oh man, I could uh just molten I'm gonna keep it on top, now I'm gonna cast molten like sadly you just don't have those tools. Holy Wrath is still crap, everyone. Still total <laughs> still complete yeah. crap. Um Master of Disguise. Getting a change. Finally. Yeah, because oh. that was just... This is another one of those ones where clearly this is because of something coming down the road or, or the old, the powerful old gods that we're seeing. Because um, it sure as hell isn't seeing playing now. But uh, Master of Disguise, uh, still 4 mana, still 4-4. Four, four, but its battle cry has been changed to give a friendly minion stealth until your next turn. So it is mm -hmm. no longer a permanent stealth... Uh, it's it's just a one turn stealth that you're granting to a minion. Yeah, so the this literally has nothing to do with the current meta. This only has to do with cards that they want to put in the game that they can't. Yep. So. Yep. Still won't still won't be played. Still won't be seen. And now they'll make whatever crazy ass card that they were thinking of that they couldn't because of this. Yeah, so. we're gonna like probably forget this change was ever made and probably miss the card. Like when the card does come out, we're probably not even gonna think about it at this point. Yeah. I really am excited to see, like, when the card, when we see the card that they wanted to make that they couldn't because of Master of Disguise, let's, we got to try to call it, right? Like, that's Master what, Disguise made this possible. That, that's what we're saying. <laughs> that, that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like, it's going to be really easy for us to just completely forget about this change and not even make notice of it again. I but. don't know what card it is yet, but none of the rogue cards they put out, none of the, the you know, the neutrals really seem to be it, but um, at some point we'll figure it out. We'll see it. We'll go. Ah, that's it. That's now you. It. You. You're the reason. Yeah. You're the reason. So, yeah. And that's it. That's that's the end of it. So we've talked about every card change so far. 
again, I think we're both pretty happy, you know, kind of as a whole. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm, again, Keeper of the Grove, maybe a little too far. Blade Flurry, maybe a little too far. But, again, I'm going to try and keep my head on straight, stay calm, and see what the rest of the cards coming out, uh, hopefully, this Thursday after the Brodan stream. Yeah, uh, what they're yeah so that bring. should be exciting. Uh, plus, we'll get to hear them actually discuss, like, Broad will actually get to discuss these changes and, and a little bit more in depth why they made them. I, I do agree that some of these, you could say, a little too far, but I'm much happier that a little too far is the word we're the phrase we're using and not, holy crap, they slaughtered it, that card is dead forever. Well, I, um, I think our King Gollum is dead forever, but I think it needed to die. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I don't even think it is dead forever. And it's, I think, like I said, I think I'll pick this in Arena sometimes. Sometimes it'll be the best card. Yeah, in but, Arena. I think in Constructed, that is a yeah. dead card. But like, like none, none of these cards, I think, are just gone forever now. Blade Flurry, I know people are like the most pissed about out of all of this stuff, I think. Um, and I get why that's the one, because right now Rogue looks like it's just not going to be a thing. But right. I promise you guys, Rogue will still be a thing. Don't worry. I, I miss the days of like Tempo Rogue, which was really, really cool. I, I, I don't, you remember that. That was actually Savitz and, yeah. and AP Drop were like both playing these really strong Tempo Rogues when we did the first ever uh, TAC Invitational. And yeah, that it, was such a fun deck. I liked you know? it. Again, it was, there was this kind of back and forth. You were, mm -hmm. ro imagine a Rogue playing minions, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and then more minions, and then more minions. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I think that was all this powerful removal, and it was about like getting minions to on board, and then removing the other guys, and getting the stick, and then doing cool things with them, and setting up, uh, trying to set up lethal that way, rather than just all your minions support this burst combo that I'm going to do at some point. Um, so you know, it's there's just going to be there's going to be some some changes to Rogue, I'm sure that we don't know about yet, and uh, I'm excited to see what it happens, what happens with it. Yeah. I like it. Um, I'd like to see that. I'll, thematically, I really like the idea of a Death Rattle Rogue, so I'm hoping with some of the new tools coming in Old Gods that that will become a, a significantly more viable archetype. Mm -hmm. But we'll uh, time will tell, man. Time will tell. But uh, anyways, that's going to do it for this uh, imp this impromptu mini so to turn into less of a mini so than I thought it was going to be. But I hope <laughs> everyone enjoyed this. And again, if you like this extra content and you want to see more from the Angry Chicken, support us over on patreon.com slash TAC. Uh, and big fat thanks to everyone over there supporting us. Uh, Dills, I think that's more or less going to do it. No long-winded outro. Just uh, follow Dills at Willie Dills on Twitter. Follow me at Garrett Art. we got to get Dills off to the airport uh, yes. so that he can go to back to his old stomping ground of San Francisco. And, mm -hmm. uh, I'm on my way back there, so there's probably going to be less streams and stuff like that this, this coming week. But uh, as soon as I get back, we're going to have a huge tech episode, so don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be crazy when I get back. So freaking lootly. And I do want to remind folks, we are going to do a live one of these at CreateCon. So go to createconvention.net, buy your ticket, come on out to Orlando in July and come see us and hang out with us. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. So uh, anyways, until uh, until next time, which may be, well, are we doing Brawl? Because you're out of town. I won't be able to. You can't do it and Joss can't do it. There is a new Brawl, so. Okay, this is interesting because Joss can't do it either. So oh, no. <laughs> there might not be right. a Brawl episode this week, but hey, you got this. Jer get Jerry. He'll, he'll yeah. do it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the case is, um, until next time, job's done. Job's done. Job's done. Yes! Oh, also, we're probably going to do our episode at 3 p. We are going to do next week, Wednesday, mm -hmm. 3 p.m. Eastern. Yes. For the live yeah. Anger Chicken, because we're going to probably do a three-hour episode. Yep. So, uh, Wednesday, 3 p.m. Be there. It's going to be long as shit. Now the job. <laughs> job's actually done. Job's actually done. Job's actually done. Actually, Yes! yes! Ha, 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 ha.